medieval knight's armor. Obviously, it was used to protect the body and to impress the crowds during festive activities. But sometimes the general rules have exceptions. Is it possible that full body plate armor was used as an exoskeleton by creatures who didn't really have proper skeletons of their own? The Medici Chapel of Florence. Did the medieval sculptor frankly tell us what is lurking inside certain knights or should we call them knights armor exoskeletons? A blogger called Pro Vladimir collected from various mainstream modern historic sources so-called strange, unexplainable things about certain medieval knights. The modern historians found such stories in old books and tried to find all kinds of weird explanations for them. But if we look at the Medici sculptures and numerous other historic depictions, there will be no need to come up with far-fetched explanations because everything falls into place. So the glamorous knights, cheered by the crowds, certainly shouldn't have had any problems on the ladies' side, so to say. Beautiful medieval damsels must have been flipping unconscious from the balconies, down on the street in front of the feet of the famous heroes. And what were the glorious heroes doing? There was a rule, at least for certain medieval knights, that their chosen lady, their dream lady, should be married to somebody else, of course. And then, since she's somebody else's wife, if uh, the given knight wins a tournament or some sort of victory, the top level of closeness that he could get from his beloved would be a handkerchief soaked with her tears, and even that wouldn't be handed down directly to him, but delivered instead by Sancho Panza. Well, if the inside content of the knight's armor was indeed as shown on this Medici sculpture, then it certainly makes sense that they were not very comfortable in showing their real face to the beloved ladies. And yet, on the other hand, the genetic material in the tears on the napkin could also have been put into some use. Is it really by chance that the idiomatic expression of blue blood was used to imply that somebody was born in an aristocratic family? Creatures of the same world as those lurking from the exoskeletons of the Medici statues really have blue blood. And on top of all this, in legends we see across multiple continents, the same story is always heard. When a foreign race wants to influence the outcome of earthly affairs, they create hybrids with the human race, who will always end up becoming, strangely enough, kings and queens or emperors. As you can see, the form of the wings of the bridegroom is still present on the top of the queen or whatever princess statue. And interestingly enough, again we have knight's armor helmet. And by the way, look at what kind of preposterous paradigm we live in. Look at the cruel means by which we take the blood of the animals 
And then we convince ourselves that they have actually donated it. This statue is kept in a historic museum in Lisbon and depicts, of course, the king and queen of Portugal. Just look at the scales, the row of scales on the back of the weird creature. Who knows if this is the original statue as intended or they glued on a head later on so that the visitors of the Medici chapel don't get horrified from what crawls out from inside the exoskeleton. Interesting stonework, by the way, on the collar. Those who take the penguins seriously they have to believe that this was chiseled out. Yes, to remind you, chiseling out things involves brutal force on them, hits with a hammer. So maybe some of you think, come on, these were just armors for battles or parades. If the knights really looked that weird, how would they manage their daily lives when they don't wear armor. And here it gets even more interesting. First of all, these knights would never go out of their castle without wearing an armor, even if they needed to walk a week or more to reach a given battlefield, they would be in full armor all the time. When the knight was out on a mission, his servants had to pour water inside the armor at least few times per day. Modern historians try to explain these strange things. Like, you see, some of the full armor didn't really have um, toilets, um, toilet arrangements, so uh, things were happening and they had to be washed with water. That's why they had to pour lots of water a few times per day. Look at this helmet. I don't know how one would survey the vicinity and fight with it if one can't see the enemy, but it's certainly very convenient for pouring water inside. Somehow the modern historians didn't finish their story, like for example how would the servants dry their master, because if you water him few times per day and he has clothes on inside the armor, he would rot if you don't dry him up. Did they dry them on like grilling on bonfires? But on the other hand, if your master is some sort of worm, he would enjoy such moist environment. I also pour water regularly on my compost heap and the worms love it. And when the knights were not on a tournament, they would simply stay hidden in their castles, which of course had plenty of dark and moist premises, exactly what the master likes. In that moist atmosphere, he would finally enjoy the sluggish handkerchief from his lady, which he obtained during the tournament. Of course, these type of creatures use sluggish substances to procreate. And as far as the servants, they were not a problem. There were very strict rules in play here. First of all, the knight would be seen only in armor, even when he's only around people in the castle. Modern historians explain this as the knights were always being fearful of traitors, even while in their own castles. 
And that's why, even when they ate in public, they still ate food through this mesh of the helmet of the knight's armor. And it gets even more weird. Some of them even slept in armor. If any of the servants would dare to touch his own master, his knight, the punishment was dead on the spot. I wonder why on the spot. Maybe before he manages to tell around about the sluggish thing inside the armor. Here, a certain knight was even called Ivar the Boneless. Yet another medieval depiction. Even with knight's helmet next to the creature. And when the knights were out for a tournament, the descriptions of the entire situation doesn't look human-like either. First of all, ordinary people didn't even stand the chance to fight with a knight. That was only in between their own race. Then the two knights would actually fight each other, and it says, days in line, without interruption, non-stop while their men would just stand by and watch. And then the one who loses the fight, in case he had to be killed, the right way to do it was to remove the helmet and then wound him with the sword. But the sword must be inserted specifically in the torso area of the Knight's armor, because simply cutting off the head didn't work. It says in the medieval books that even with a cut head, the knights could go on. Which of course makes perfect sense, looking at the Medici statue, if somebody was cutting off the helmet, he would just retract in the torso area. And another strange rule, the army, the men of the defeated knight would be killed on the spot. Unless the defeated party goes for a small ritual of officially and voluntarily handing over his own men to the other party. And that also applied to the castle. That also seems somewhat odd because uh, Probably, at least as far as we know, the human tradition of war during those times is if you conquer something with military force, it's yours automatically. And I don't know if it is just me, but some of these armors simply don't seem to be suitable for humans. How can you have this on and look forwards? Here as well, the openings for the eyes seem to be like on the level of the nose. Or this one, was it like tailor-made? For some of those people who always have their head like hanging way before the torso, 
the shoes are called top model if you wanna walk probably you won't even notice your life will be so difficult already because you can't even do proper things with your hands they always have to be on the side of your body bent in a weird manner and also I can barely believe that this would fit men fighters look at their thin legs what kind of joke is this they look feeble starved I mean particularly the lower parts of their legs they're completely in metal there is no adjustment strap I hope there is some way to open this lower part to put your leg in otherwise I would be sure that they were worms and not men because otherwise how can you put your foot through it It seems quite a colorful crowd was inhabiting Earth during the Middle Ages. And the strange worm-like creatures lurking in the armors would have been just one out of the many races influencing the human society. Like now, we are in the same situation. And there was variety amongst men as well. Currently, some 5,000 suits of armor are housed in various museums and most of them would fit underfed men of height below 160. There is a lot of straightforwardly dwarfish stuff as well. And at the same time, some of the armor and the weapons are for really big men, even for our standards. As with most things in history, the earlier knight armors were far superior in quality and artistic work compared to those which came later. So maybe there were weird creatures wearing the knight's armors as exoskeletons, maybe not. But here is an interesting piece of information about a human knight from Latvia. So this knight lived in Latvia some seven or eight hundred years ago according to mainstream sources and he was found mummified in the swamps of the Easter Island. Sometimes in swamp conditions people tend to get mummified naturally. So the given knight in full martial outfit and having golden coins of his time in his pockets 
was found there by an Australian expedition during the last century. Of course, nobody's got any clue how did he get over there in the midst of the Pacific Ocean. And something else interesting is that the find was made barely 30 years ago. And yet I couldn't find a single photograph. Well, if the full thing disappeared, together with the photographs, then it must have really been very interesting.